This is the Simondoa cave roach, Simondoa concerfarium. On my website, I have long referred to them as the extinct in the wild roach. I call them that because, of course, they are extinct in the wild, or thought to be. As I understand it, they're only known from one place, and that's where the parent specimens were collected from, of the ones that I have now. It was a cave system in Guinea, West Africa, the country of Guinea, and a scientist, the co-author of the species, uh, the species was described by Dr. Roth and Piotr Naskarecki. Not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, but Mr. Naskarecki contacted me, I think, in late 2011 or 2012 and asked me if I wanted a culture of this roach. And he told me at that time that their name concert Farium meant to conserve or to preserve, and he wanted to get them into the hands of people like myself who were pet roach enthusiasts to help conserve the species. And so I acquired them, I think in January maybe of 2012, and I raised them up for a generation. I think he passed them on to a few other people. I don't know if there was anybody else in the United States. I think there was somebody in the UK as well. But I bred them and I, uh, in the spirit of conservation, I shared them with some other hobbyists, some of the um, more well-known roach hobbyists back at that time. And I think that we've done a pretty good job ever since. It's now 2020, so eight years now in spreading them around the hobby. Be very interesting to know how many people are actually raising them now. But eight years for me, I'm back here. So their cave system, the one that they were living in, it was going to be mined for a rock, an ore called bauxite. And um, that's the primary source material for aluminum. And so it was very important that some of the animals from that area, that the cave was studied and that this cockroach in particular was saved because when humans got done mining that, there wasn't going to be a cave left for the roaches to live in, in the same way that people found it. A sad story, but also a wonderful story. In one sense, it was people who were going to make this species that had been on our planet for millions of years, they're going to cause it to go extinct, but we are also their salvation. And it's one of the neat stories in the pet bug hobbies or across all of the animals, animal hobbies that um, it's because of people that a species that, and we, nobody really knows, they may occur in nature somewhere still in small pockets but I don't think they are known to at this point, now quite a few years later after the studies were done. But um, we are going to continue to care for the species and ensure that um, they are around. And who knows what the future holds for the species? It's kind of Hard to imagine that they will ever be reintroduced to the wild. Um, like I was saying, it's quite possible that that was their very last habitat on the planet and they were headed towards extinction anyway. We don't really know, but 
I know that I have one here in my hand and I know that I will continue to raise this species for the rest of my life. Um, they actually live in the openings of caves. They, they are in association with bat guano. Um, we don't feed them that in captivity. Like other roaches, they are uh, pretty happy on the standard fare foods that we humans eat or foods that we feed to our pets. Oh, almost took off there. Um, interestingly, and I, I don't think I've ever fed them this. Maybe I did right when I got them just because I was a little nervous that they might not eat other things. I remember Mr. Nasbrecki telling me that he fed them chicken. And I don't recall whether he said it was raw or cooked chicken, but for uh, sanitation reason, reasons, um, I sounded like uh, Peter Brady there, pork chops and apple sauce. Uh, for sanitation reasons, I, I'm not, it's not something that I offer them <laughs> ever. And so my, uh, my foods I'll discuss when we go downstairs and take a look, a closer look at this species. I don't know if the light does them justice, but um, one of the saving graces of them is that they are a truly beautiful cockroach. Enjoy the video. All right, let's take a look at the Simondoa cave roaches. Got a couple containers here. I've had these containers for a very long time. In fact, it was 2012 when I first got this species. And I have two groups of them. One of them I keep here in this five gallon bucket. It's a very secure fitting lid. This species is very prone to escape. And so you have to be extremely careful in securing them. And I just changed the paper towel on that a few minutes ago when I was preparing for the video. Always good to pop in there and take a look at things, make sure nothing's going to come running out at us as we are getting the camera rolling. So this is a very quick moving species. And when I flip this over, you're going to see a lot of them. These are the adult roaches. And I'm going to rest this. Actually, I'll just set this over here sort of like this while we take a look at the adults for a few moments. Beautiful species for nearly going extinct. You can see that semi-gloss pronotum, the rounded black section there with a sort of ivory colored perimeter on it. And then there are some golden flecks there in the wings. Just kind of speckled looking. Interesting to see them just sitting side by side there like that. Get in close right now. One of the nice things about roaches compared with other pet bugs is that they're communal. Colony pets, it's always interesting to watch their interactions. Really pretty. The stripy abdomens underneath the wings, like bumblebees. Another one just came by. And of course, they are cave roaches. Now they don't live in deep in caves, in places where light doesn't sort of filter in. They more live in the openings and of course we talked about that cave system earlier they don't live in caves anymore because they are extinct in the wild the spiky legs are one of the most attractive features of this species and much easier to see against the backdrop of the plastic tank wall than it is against the backdrop of the substrate. 
Now, I haven't done this yet. This is going to surprise you guys when I turn this over. Well, that wasn't as surprising as I thought it was going to be. You can see some different stages here. Um, the younger, the youngest nymphs scattered. But even the nymphs are rather attractive in my opinion. Fairly spiky legs. And sort of a shimmer, sort of a uh, pearlescent quality to them when the light catches them just right. Hopefully we'll get a better chance to observe that here in a moment, but they have sort of that oil and water sheen. Um, especially the sub-adult nymphs. That one was a few molts back from being mature. There we go. Now, of course, they're running from the light. Um, this species climbs very well. One of the tricks I use when I'm working with them and let me go grab it. I will get a spray bottle and I will spray down the edges of the cage a little bit and that sort of causes them to have a problem getting traction as I'm working in the cage when I'm either pulling specimens for an order or feeding them. You can see that one right there. Despite the water droplets, it's still having a fairly easy time making its way up. Now that there is a very, very thick one. And so she's a female and she is going to be popping out some babies rather soon, which is always nice. These give live birth. And uh, take another quick look at the mass of them there. They don't mind being tucked up in each other at all. I'm gonna be moving some of these into, oh, this one here has paler wings, and so it has just matured. You can see how translucent its wings are compared to the others, sort of a grayish, sort of ghostly appearance. And that's because it has just shed its skin and become an adult. So that's kind of a neat thing to see when you're making a video. That sort of, I mean, they only look like this for a short while. And so it's always really neat to document what that change looks like because you see it so infrequently. And even some interesting markings up there on the pronotum, a little bit of reds and oranges up there, and the legs are a little bit paler at this point. That's really neat. Did you hear it? Like a little mouse squeak. And let's get a little look at this one here. This one's probably older. I can see that its antennae have been shortened a bit over time. And I'm guessing this is a male. I've never really made too many observations or tried to distinguish between the two. I've assumed that the males tend to be smaller. Um, this one here it has a little bit of a yellow marking there at that terminal segment on right in between the cerci there. Sort of a division that's gold. Whereas this one over here, despite being considerably larger, doesn't have that colored yellow line that runs down the middle of the terminal segment like this one. So I'm guessing that's an obvious difference between males and females. Sometimes I just sort of learn as I go. I keep the colonies going and people want me to sex things, but I'm always kind of reluctant to learn because then I have to do it for them <laughs> when they place the order. And I mostly just sell the small nymphs anyway. And then I always ensure that, not just because I don't want the species to go extinct, but for breeding purposes, that I retain a good group of adults so that I have that next generation insured. And with a species as important as, as this, and you'll probably see in future videos too, I tend to have more than one tank of everything because it's that concept of not putting all your eggs in one basket. If something were to go wrong in this, or 
maybe um, you know I left it on top of the heat lamp for too long or there was a forward fly outbreak and I temporarily moved it to another location you just never know what's gonna happen so when something's really important or when your colony grows to a size like this I mean this one's pretty these are pretty much outgrowing this container again at this point and so I'm gonna move some of them back into this bucket of them that's sort of my my overflow you can see um, this is definitely not something that they're going to be able to escape from it's got that rubber band that goes all the way around it um, I mean paint can't spill out of these buckets these are paint buckets and I have at some point in the past drilled holes and you can see through the holes that I had placed some um, plastic screen over the holes originally and that, that's enough to keep out certain things, but then I went further at some point after that, probably years later, I uh, taped some strips of paper towel over them. Um, tape, of course, is a horrible thing to have around um, mantises or roaches or pretty much any other kind of pet bugs because they can get caught in it, but these are well on the outside, and so there's no concerns there. So I do love the bucket setup. Um, they're a little bit difficult to get open once these lids are snapped down tight, but um, totally worth it because they will just climb right out of that tank. These ones are actually being as well behaved as they ever have been before. And so I moved a few of the larger ones into my bucket over here. Guess I'll pop a couple more in over there. Maybe a couple of these nymphs as well. And uh, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of carrot down there. I mostly only feed them carrot and fish food pellets. I pop some apple in there every once in a while. And then besides those two things, I'll grab some fish food pellets here too. Those look like. These are the fish food pellets. Nice small bite sized bits of protein. Put some in the bucket over here, too. And then the last thing I add in these jelly cups. They really seem to like those and they help with hydration. And I missed the substrate just a little bit every once in a while. In my experience, this species likes it pretty dry. There's a little bit of die-off, I think, in the adults, sort of early die-off, if I uh, don't, if I keep the container too moist. Now you'll see also that I have this paper towel liner that I pinch between the lid and the container base, and that's to keep the very small nymphs, and of course they can squeeze through um, holes that are smaller than you would expect. And then pop the bucket closed here. And that's it. I've had them for eight years now. Simondoa cave roaches. At some point in the past, I wanted to let somebody who was helping me feed them know that it was a climbing species. <laughs> I've never changed the substrate in that tank, and they love it. Let's take a peek at this one here. It's getting going on some carrot. Cleaning, cleaning itself. Such clean animals roaches are. So you can see on this one down here, that sort of oil and water quality I was talking about. Such wonderful colors in the older nymphs of this species. Haven't yet matured rainbow hues there. Oh, look at it wriggle underneath that piece of cork bark. That was pretty cool. Let's see if we can get down here, get a nice headshot for you. Maybe you'd like to see that end. <laughs> hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.